Hello everybody and welcome to another review slash tutorial. This one is a request um, for MUVR. Uh, for those of you that don't know what MUVR is, it's basically a virtual environment. Um, think of it as your bedroom as a, as a kid. And it's a place to go virtually to play all of your old games, read video game magazines, uh, watch old cartoons and um, put posters on your wall, basically. The things you would do in your room as a kid. Um, a few people in the comment section wanted me to review this next and give a tutorial on how to use it. Um, and because my son has an Oculus Quest, I decided to put everything together and give it a shot. So think of this as a guide to get you going in MUVR alongside of your Oculus Quest 2. So the first thing I did was I went to the MUVR.net website to try and download this thing. Um, and their main page gives a little bit of information about it. As you can see here, they remind you right off the bat that this is a beta and that it will only work with PC VR systems meaning uh, Oculus standalone or a PSVR uh, won't cut it, and that they also have a Patreon for donations. Um, they give a brief description on what this is. As I mentioned, it's a virtual recreation of many a kid's bedroom in the 90s. So let's get to the meat and potatoes. It's your video games that you play in here. Um, there are probably 70-plus systems from the Nintendo right up to the PlayStation 2 and everything in between. They are all done through a program called RetroArch, and uh, that's basically the meat and potatoes of this. Uh, they also break down some of the features that MUVR offers you. Netplay is pretty cool, I guess. Okay. And there's a little, there's a cool video here of somebody playing three gun games at once, which is really neat. Um, I'm not setting all of that up in this tutorial, but I'll, we'll, we'll get you started anyway with everything to start playing games inside of here. Um, okay, so let's get started. The very first thing you need to do is download MUVR, and it's not on this website at all. I, I couldn't find it. Apparently it's in the Discord channel. You gotta go there to download the the program. So here we are in Discord. You need to go into their Discord and then find a um, channel called Welcome. Once you're here, you have to scroll through all of this crap to even download this, and you have to click on emojis over and over and over and over again. Click, click, click an emoji, click an emoji. Basically, you're acknowledging that you've read everything on here, um, I guess. Then you have to find the download. It's not here, it's in a different channel. You have to go to the download channel. Click all of these emojis and eventually, well, read everything they want you to read if you want to. Click all of the emojis and then they will give you a download link here. Um, but your best bet is to go through this process because then you are tied into the Discord and you can bug them if you need help. Um, okay, so now that you have this downloaded, you want to extract it. I believe it's a 7-zip uh, file. After extracting MUVR into a directory of your choice, you'll have a file structure that looks something like this. You're halfway there. Next, you want to download RetroArch, and you have to download a very specific version that coincides with MUVR. If you use the wrong version, you'll have issues. So all you have to do is visit the MUVR website, and somewhere in their FAQs, they will remind you of which version to download. As of right now, it's RetroArch 1.7.5. Download this zip file as well, 
And this time we're going to extract this inside of the RetroArc folder, which is already created inside of our MUVR folder. So that's MUVR, RetroArc, and we'll dump the uh, contents of RetroArc inside of that folder. Don't be intimidated, there's not much to it. Open up the RetroArc folder inside of MUVR. Take your newly downloaded RetroArc zip or 7-zip file. Extract its contents inside of the folder. And you're done with RetroArc, basically. There's nothing else to do here. Everything else will be set up inside of a third program, which we will get to in just a moment. The only other thing you're going to need are the games. And for tutorial purposes, I'll set up one system for you. Okay, inside of MUVR, you have a games folder or directory. Inside of here, you need to create subdirectories for each system of your choice. Uh, I've made mine NES for the original Nintendo Entertainment System. Inside here, as you can see, I have all of my game or ROM files. I can't tell you where to get them, so please don't ask. The final thing we need to do is load up a program called Game Scanner. This is also located inside of your MUVR folder. Doing that will bring up this application, and in this case we're going to load all of our games into MUVR. You'll be surprised at how easy this is. Okay, add folder, select NES, select folder, the media already is picked up as NES, the core is already being assigned, and lastly there's a specific option for mouse, keyboard, or light gun, and to my understanding that's something you have to select per game down the road. That's it. You can optionally update your core list and make sure to download any missing cores that are uh, now being assigned uh, to your system. The last step here is to scan games for MUVR. Uh, this is going to scan your library uh, into your virtual world. Think of it as RetroArc and MUVR communicating with each other. Now it's time to move on to playing in MUVR because you've set everything up. There's nothing else to do. Uh, if you want to go ahead and install new systems, do this process over and over again until every system you have is, is in your, uh, your VR room. Next, you'll want to load up your Oculus PC application, which is what you see here. You don't have to do anything here, just have it on and running so it could have the computer talk to your Oculus headset. That's it. Put on your headset and you'll see the virtual world here, which is the Oculus version of the PC app. And from here you can load up various PC VR applications. As you can see now, I'm loading up MUVR for the first time. This is kind of where the fun stopped for me. Um, I'll get to all of that in a moment. Okay, so I'm finally loading into this virtual room. And with the helmet on, it looks really cool. I've never really used VR before, so I'm kind of blown away right now with what I see. It feels like I'm in here. Um, I'm just trying to get used to the controls. And I guess you could call me a boomer or an old man but I'm just having trouble with these. And now I'm stuck behind the television, you know, and I'm just trying to move around. And I really don't know what I'm doing. And uh, I think that's part of the, the problem uh, for me is that there is a bit of a learning curve with the controls. So, um, I mean, after about five minutes of playing around, you kind of get the hang of it a little bit. You could point this laser at anything you want, and you could bring it right to you. Um, kind of a Jedi trick. And um, that laser itself, come to find out, is how you go into the game menu as well. Uh, it took me a little while to figure that out. Uh, I probably should have read all of the crap that the Discord channel wanted me to read. 
So I advise you to do that. Now, as you set up each system, they'll be populated here, scattered all over the place. Now, because we only set up the Nintendo Entertainment System, it's the only one available in this room. Um, and the Nintendo over here, for some reason, has the cords hooked up to the TV. So, we're definitely going to try to turn this one on. And I think we're going to have some success. Well, you know, I'll get this baseball out of here first. Because it's, it's right in front of the power button. So, okay. So, power on. Power on. Power on. Power on. No. Power on. Power. I'm pressing every different button combination. Oh, there we go. Okay, the Nintendo is finally on, and it's booting up a random game. Hmm. Oh, Rockin' Ball. Very cool. Unfortunately, I still don't know what I'm doing, and I cannot figure out the controls. But... I don't give up, so, you know, we'll get there eventually. I ended up booting out and then booting back in after doing a little more research. And come to find out, um, you point that laser at the television, and then you can go inside of the game menu. Um, but all I have are my Oculus controllers, and I'm just not doing well with these things. I'm not really enjoying them too much yet. And the problem is because I, I think I have a stationary boundary set up. Um, so I can't really walk. I'm moving the thumbstick to move me places or I'm fast traveling. It may look like it's skipping to you, but that's, it's literally me fast traveling from spot to spot. Um, if this were wireless and I were free to walk around the room, I think the experience would be 100 times better. But I'm tethered into a 10-foot cable, so I really I can't go anywhere. I could stand up or sit down, and that's about it. Um, so that's part of the um, displeasure for me. It kind of ruins the experience of moving around in here freely. And that has nothing to do with the MUVR guys. That's my Oculus, you know, and that's all it is. Um, so I don't want to blame these awesome developers for that mishap. It's, it's my hardware, you know. Setting this up was so easy. I guess for me, the learning curve is getting used to the um, the VR controlling. You know, I'm struggling with a lot of uh, simple things like moving things around. Pressing the buttons, stuff like that. Um, the Rampage is pretty, pretty cool. Every time you restart... There will be a random game inside of the Nintendo. And I guess when you change your game, you point your laser pointer at the Nintendo or at the game system itself. And it will bring up a selection menu where you can pick your games. I, for the love of God, could not figure out how to do that. You know, I would point it at the Nintendo and I would hit every button combination on both of my controllers. And it would not bring up it would not bring up any menu at all. Um, same thing for the television. Uh, if you point your pointer at the um, the TV and you hit a button, you go into the game control menu. Eventually, I was able to figure that out, and I, I was able to go in a game called Zombie Nation and control the character a little bit with my Oculus controllers. But it just wasn't. A fun way for me to play the game. Um, if I had to do it over again, I would probably plug in a controller, which you can do, into your computer and um, play it with a gamepad instead. So I give it bonus points for being very easy to set up, and uh, the VR world is really cool. I just I couldn't get past two things: my tethered headset, which limited my range of motion, as well as getting used to the controllers, my Oculus controllers. If I try it again, I'll probably end up making a video with my gamepad instead. 
So I just, yeah, I had enough of this. Um, everything's too hard to, too, it's just too hard to control with my controllers. So I decided to bug out and destroy my room instead. It was a little easier than playing a game. So, yeah. Um, I'll come back to this again in the future and I will revisit all of this when I have a better setup. Um, and I would like to try using the gamepad rather than the motion controllers to control the menus and uh, the, the games themselves. Um, other than that, everything else was really cool. Um, don't be afraid to give this a shot. You'll probably have a better, you know, a better try at it than I did um, after you're inside the VR room, especially if you have a better rig, like a better helmet, a wireless setup, um, and better controllers. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the Oculus controllers either. But uh, either way, I hope this video helped you at least get this thing installed and running. As you could see, there really wasn't a whole heck of a lot to it, and um, maybe you'll have a better luck. You'll have better luck than me using the controllers inside of the game. All right, thank you very much for watching, and I hope this helped somebody. Have a good day.